Hi everybody, it's my latest project, it's fixing my wife's monitor. And uh, the issue here is when you turn the power on, you'll see the power light blinks and it won't turn on. It takes a while. After like a few minutes, it'll finally come on. Um, I believe the problem is bad capacitors in here. So I've ordered some new ones. I'm going to... Okay, I've got the uh, power circuit board out of the monitor right now. And you'll see these four capacitors here and these two right here are the ones that need to be replaced. If you get in close, I don't know if you can see it, but they're all bulging at the top. They're ready to burst. You can see right there. Um, you see, like, here's a... These capacitors here are nice and flat, as well as this one here. Um, this is a sign that these capacitors are going bad. They're not completely bad yet, and it still turns on, but it just takes a long time. I'm going to replace these four capacitors here and these two right here. I'm going to use my uh, desoldering iron to remove the solder, and that's it's really simple. You just go to the bottom here and you suck the excess solder out, pull the component out, and then solder a new one in with the soldering. Another thing that I did um, is I needed to buy a whole bunch of capacitors for a whole bunch of things I'm fixing, like my Mortal Kombat, um, my Mortal Kombat, my uh, Turbo Express, as well as my wife's monitor. Now, you can see there's a huge pile of capacitors I got here from Mouser. But one of the things that worked out really well is I used the customer part number in the, when I was ordering it, you can see here it says MK01, and that's, that's when I ordered for my Mortal Kombat. Now, what worked out really well is they actually put the customer part number right on the bags that they sent, so I know this says Hans GEF, and these are two of the capacitors I need to replace, so I can go through this easily. I don't have to look at the crazy part numbers when I'm doing this, so here I am just going to go sort through these capacitors. Okay, the first set of capacitors I'm going to replace are these two here, which are 10 volts, 1,000 microfarads. <clears throat> so I've got them right here. Now I start this by flipping it around. I find the two pins here for each capacitor. Now I look at it first. The important thing to note is that you want to make sure that you have your polarity right on capacitor. You'll see this line here with a little dash in it. That means it's a negative side, negative pole. All these the negative pole on the outside. So this is pretty easy. So I just take this is this desoldering iron. It's got an air bulb, and it what you do is you press it on till the solder melts with the bulb squeezed, and then when it's melted, you just release and it sucks the solder up. So here we go. First two. So there's the first one. Let me just carefully pull it out. There we go. So it's removed. I just pulled it out. Missed it on the camera there. Here we go, and I just pull it out. And there we go. It's removed. Now, now it's to prep and put the other capacitors in. And these are higher quality Japanese capacitors. <clears throat> and just look for the negative side. And we just put them in. What you see here is um, a flux cleaner for soldering. I'm just going to put a little bit of this on a Q-tip. I'm going to clean those pads up. I 
and then I'll flow some solder on them and hopefully this will uh, solder in nicer. They weren't soldering in very well. Okay, you see here I've soldered those in. I have a little trouble. Okay, the next step that you want to do is you want to take and trim the leads off on those capacitors after you've soldered it in. The next one, I'm going to put a bit of a little of this on there, it just always helps. You see it's in place. Now to keep it in there while you're soldering, I like to bend the pins out a little bit. really hard to solder with this uh, lead-free solder. I had some nice Radio Shack old-fashioned leaded solder. Works great. Melts a lot better. But it's all gone. Used it for years. There you go. Stuff's in place. Trim it. There we go. There's two down, four to go. So I'll move on to these next ones here. Oops, that wasn't good. I should always make sure you empty out here. Your uh, desoldering iron off whatever project you're working. Always forget that. That one just fell out. As you can see, that's how it's, how it's burst. Well, almost burst. And the last one here. There we go. Now, if you look at here, these are 25 volt, 470 microfarads. Now, you can always go a higher voltage. But I got the same ones here. Because when you go higher voltage, they do get larger as well, depending on the quality of them as well. Cheap Chinese ones are always garbage. So I'm just gonna get the flux on there. Okay. So now I just put these in polarity, make sure I got the negative polarity facing outward like that. Bend the pins to hold them in place. Now grab my iron. Now I like to drip a little bit of the flux on the iron too. It makes it easier to solder, especially when you're using this really bad. Uh, solder. You want to make sure you have your heat applied to both elements that you're trying to solder together. 
or else the solder won't flow properly. So you got to make sure it's in firm contact with both the pad and the capacitor leg. You wait a second for it to heat up before you try to apply the, the solder. There we go. Only two more left to go. Some of my uh, snips here became rusty. Just sitting on my workbench, so I don't understand. Okay, so the last two are these two right here. That one just fell right out, as well as that one. You can see here, the size is different. Make sure you get the negative end in. What? Okay, I have all the capacitors in right here. Those are the four replaced there. The two that I replaced here were much larger, so I laid them down on the side, and there were some wires here, so I put some electrical tape so that this didn't, I don't think it's conductive, but I laid it down there. So now I can put this back in. We'll see if it works. There it is, reassembled now. Um, one of the things to keep in mind when you do this is the speaker wire that connects uh, these two little speakers to the main board. The connector is really very tight, and I was trying to remove it. I actually broke the wires off, and I was being very careful. Um, since I'm not using the speakers in this monitor, I decided to not even bother with uh, fixing the connector. Um, I just taped off the wires. Uh, well, this project didn't come out like I hoped it to. Um, I went and plugged the monitor in, and it didn't work. Uh, I seem to have some problems with uh, doing capacitors recently. Um, this monitor, as well as when I uh, redid the capacitors in this uh, arcade monitor here on the controller board, uh, they didn't work afterwards. Um, I didn't show that in the previous in the beginning of this video, but this monitor actually did work after it warmed up for a while. So now it's completely useless. Um, I'm not completely upset about it in terms of money loss because I only paid $100 for it about six years ago for this monitor, and I got another one off of um, Mway for fair, really cheap, and it's larger and a better monitor now. Um, but I am upset that it didn't work. Um, if you watch the video and you're a person who's done these kind of things. I think you see that I wasn't doing anything anything wrong when I was putting this together, and, uh, and I've gone over it several times, and um, I can't figure out what why why it doesn't work. Um, maybe one of the capacitors I bought was bad. Um, I think it's strange that it's happened to me twice now. I have the polarity right and everything else, so um, I've just been having some bad luck with uh, replacing capacitors. I've done this in other projects. I did it in my Turbo Express, and I'm going to replace a few more in it, and as well. Um, I'm still going to do the soundboard my Mortal Kombat, but I think I'm going to do it one capacitor at a time. I'm going to replace a capacitor, test it, replace a capacitor, test it, just to, just to make sure and to help isolate any problems I might run into. Um, so this, was a, this project was a, a failure in terms of uh, its results, but I think that I've learned something from this um, as well as the previous project um, that while it's annoying to go back and forth and back and forth, I think it's better in terms of uh, figuring out where you might make a mistake um, in terms of doing it, or at least knowing where something went wrong. Um, again, I don't think I made any mistakes. I think it, if anything, you know, maybe it's very possible I plugged in the backlight um, wires um, reversed, although I, I that would be the most likely thing to happen, but I don't think that happened either. I think, you know, it might have just been from taking it apart. Something else broke. I'm not sure. But that's the end of this project. And, uh, I'm sorry it didn't come to a, to a successful end, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Anyways, uh, thank you for uh, watching this project.